uh, which uh, the, the title of his talk was already announced, so I'll, I will not repeat it. So Stefan, please begin. Please share your screen. Thank you very much. I would like first to thank uh, for the invitation and possibility to present uh, this research. This is a new research. Uh, let me just go back, yes. So the title of the talk is uh, semi Fredholm Theory in Sister Algebras. And uh, this, um, I should just say a few words. Uh, I obtained uh, my uh, PhD in Marsh. And after that, I wanted to go a step further to uh, obtain a generalization of the results from my uh, thesis to the level of arbitrary uh, C star algebra. So uh, let me just say a few words on the motivation for this research before uh, introducing uh, definitions. Uh, so uh, Kečkić and Lazovic, uh, two mathematicians from Belgrade, introduced uh, an axiomatic approach to Fredholm theory uh, by introducing uh, the notion of a Fredholm type element uh, with respect to the ideal of finite type elements in a unital uh, C star algebra. Later, I shall explain what it really means, uh, finite type elements and Fredholm type element, by, but they wanted to study uh, uh, in arbitrary C star algebra uh, uh, Fredholm elements. So not uh, concrete operators, which we know from before Fredholm operators, but arbitrary, uh, arbitrary element, uh, C star algebras and such elements. And it turns out that this notion is a generalization of a C star Fredholm operator on the standard module uh, introduced by Professor Mischeko and Professor Fomenko, because we recall that uh, bounded adjoinable operators on uh, the Hilbert C star module, uh, the set of such operators form a C star algebra. Uh, so there we have a concrete C star algebra, and uh, there we will also have a concrete example of a finite type element, since will be a compact operators on a Hilbert module. Uh, so this is a, a generalized axiomatic uh, uh, setting where instead of considering concrete sister algebra of operators, they study arbitrary uh, sister algebra. And not only that, it is not only generalization of this approach on modules, but it, is, it turns out that it is also generalization of a manfred brewer approach uh, regarding uh, uh, Fredholm operators, generalized Fredholm operators on uh, properly infinite uh, von Neumann algebras. So, uh, starting uh, from these two concrete approaches, one by uh, on modules and one on von Neumann algebras, they wanted to introduce a general axiomatic approach, which uh, uh, such that these two approaches are just uh, concrete cases. Uh, and when they introduced uh, this approach uh, in definition of Redcon type element, uh, they obtained then that the set of Redcon type elements in this Easter algebra is open in the norm topology and uh, invariant under perturbation by a uh, finite type elements. This is what we know for classical Fredholm operators that they are invariant under compact perturbations. And also they prove multiplicativity of the index. I should say that their index is in the K group. So, uh, and they proved uh, this multiplicativity and also they obtain generalization of the Atkinson uh, theory. And this is what they did in their paper. Uh, so now my research uh, during my PhD, uh, as you may be recall from my previous talk, was uh, semi fredholm and semi wire theory on the Hilbert C-star module. So then I asked myself, uh, uh, could I, uh, in the same way as I extended the Fredholm theory on Hilbert modules, uh, uh, try to extend uh, this axiomatic Fredholm theory in C-star algebras to, as the title say, a semi fredholm theory in uh, C-star algebra. So uh, in this talk, I shall present the results uh, from this uh, extension, the semi Fredholm theory in this uh, sister algebra as a continuation of the approach <laughs> by Kinsic and uh, Lazovic. Uh, so uh, I will then introduce a notion of semi Fredholm type element and also semi vial type element with respect to this idea of finite type elements. And then of course, the aim is obta to obtain a generalization in this setting of several results from classical semi fredholm and semi vial theory, uh, which we know from before. But uh, one can ask, well, why should we do this? We have some general axiomatic approach, but what are the applications? So as I said in the previous slide, in the same way as this axiomatic approach by Kečkić and Lazovic generalized the results by Brewer in the case of von Neumann algebras, 
uh, the aim is that this uh, approach to semi fredkin theory in sister algebra uh, should enable us to obtain extensions uh, from Brewer's fredkin theory on von Neumann algebras to semi fredkin and semi vial theory in properly infinite von Neumann algebras. And there, when we come to this concrete case, there we again speak about concrete operators, and the results has, uh, have nicer description there. I shall illustrate also applications in the end of the, this talk, but let me first uh, fix uh, some uh, notation and uh, definitions. So the very first definition uh, given by Kechkic Alazovic uh, is uh, uh, regarding uh, this ideal of finite type elements. So first of all, this F should be a self-adjoined ideal, and it should also have an approximate unit, uh, which should uh, be approximate unit in the norm topology, approximate unit for this ideal F, and this approximate unit should consist only of projections. And as you recall, for compact uh, operators, we, we have it actually. The ideal of compact operators is a self-adjoined uh, ideal, and also we have uh, we have a uh, projections which are the projections onto the finite span of the basis of orthonormal uh, uh, vectors. So really, this imitates this in a more generalized uh, setting. And uh, also, we are, we wish to be able to relate arbitrary to projections in this idea. So if we have two arbitrary projections, then we want that there should exist uh, some uh, v in A such that v v star is equal to Q and such that V star V is orthogonal uh, to P. Um, I myself do not apply this property in my proofs, but it seems that uh, Kechkic and Lazovic needed this proof, this property in order to obtain their, their first results in Fred theory. So I believe that this is also necessary, but these first two conditions are definitely necessary. And uh, such ideal satisfying all these conditions uh, they call it, and we will call it uh, uh, the ideal of finite type elements. So the elements belonging to this ideal will be called finite type uh, elements. And that, then uh, we also have this equivalence relation for the projections belonging to this ideal. And uh, it is uh, a Murray von Neumann uh, equivalence. Uh, actually, the problem is that I uh, copy pasted the definition from this paper by Kjaskic Lazovic, and now I see that uh, here we should not have f we should actually have the whole a because uh, this relation can be defined for arbitrary projections in a not only for a finite uh, projections but uh, we only need for this finite case uh, so you we recall what is more for neumann equivalence this means that uh, there should exist a v in a such that v, v star is p and v star v is uh, q and uh, then if you consider this set then you can divide by this equivalence the relation obtain quotient set, which is a commutative semi-group uh, with respect to addition, and then they uh, build a K group by applying this growth ending uh, factor. And they need K group for the index, uh, as, I, as I said. Uh, let, let us speak about the invertibility modular pair of projections. This is quite a central, uh, uh, central notion in uh, what we will speak about. Uh, so for an element uh, A, in this sister algebra and the PQ projections in A, uh, let us set uh, A prime uh, be uh, this uh, element. So what is this? Well, this should be actually a left upper uh, corner of uh, uh, in two by two a matrix of the element A with respect to the compositions obta obtained by these uh, projections. So A, A prime is this left upper corner in this two by two matrix. And uh, what happens? Well, we say that A is invertible up to pair PQ. If there is some B in A of this form here, uh, such that A prime B is uh, <clears throat> one minus Q and B A prime is uh, one minus P. And then uh, such B uh, will be called uh, the PQ inverse of A. So actually, it will be more Penrose inverse of this uh, element A prime. Uh, so uh, uh, really, we want that uh, if you consider the left uh, upper corner of this matrix, uh, this should be invertible, consider it as a mapping from uh, uh, one minus P um, A in, into uh, one minus QA. 
So uh, uh, this is what we have uh, from the notion of red column operators on Hilbert modules where we demand invertibility of the left upper corner of the matrix. Uh, and uh, now very essential uh, property which they obtained is uh, concerning openness. Uh, they will use it for the openness uh, of the set of red column type elements. So it turns out that if A is invertible up to a pair of uh, these uh, uh, projections, fixed projection being a Q, then if you take a C in A such that C in the norm is sufficiently small, then A plus C will be invertible up to the same pair of P Q. So this is very, very useful uh, property. Uh, and the reason for mentioning their result is because I also apply it very often in my results later, I will explain. Uh, and also if you denote B1 by PQ inverse of A plus C, then you can also estimate B1, but uh, I do not need that. But really what I need is the openness uh, with respect to the same pair of projection. Another lemma which uh, I wrote myself, but uh, which is straightforward to show is that uh, if- uh, I'm Sorry, uh, PQ here is your finite elements, yes? Elements of finite type. Uh, uh, no, here they they do not, uh, well, I, I should mention this. Thank you for the question. Uh, here PQ are arbitrary projections, uh, PQ are arbitrary projections in A. So, so far I do not restrict to finite type elements, but when we speak about fret on type element, then we will only consider finite, finite uh, P and Q. But uh, so far this lemma is true for arbitrary uh, projections uh, in A. And this is what we need when we speak about the semi fret column elements, because there on one side, we will not have a, a finite projection. So therefore we need to hold for arbitrary projections and not only for finite uh, projections. Uh, is it okay or uh, should I give some more? No, okay, thank you, thank you. Okay. And also here, so PQR projections in A and then A is invertible up to pair PQ if and only if a star is invertible up to pair uh, a QP. So simply they change uh, the I'm role. Sure. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm sure one more question. Invertible in common sense. So there exists an element such that the multiplication is identity, yes? Uh, well, in this sense here, as I defined. Uh -huh. uh, so it means invertible up to pair. So it's not, it not pure invertibility, but it is up, up to pair. Okay. Or in other way, you can uh, consider this element and say that this element has uh, more Penrose inverse. This okay. is what, what you want. So if, the, uh, I, and is, if I understand correctly, if A is um, an algebra operator algebra, then this is an analog of parametrics, yes? Uh, could you repeat, please? I didn't hear. If A I'm is sorry. an algebra... If A is an algebra of operators, then uh, this is an analog of parametrics, yes? quasi invert element, yes or no? Uh, I'm not, uh, not sure uh, uh, what you exactly mean, but uh, it simply means that you have some B such that this, uh, this okay. host, or, or okay. if okay. you take, uh, as I said, illustrative is to think that uh, you, your element A when you have these two projections, then you have a decomposition and you can write two by two matrices of A with respect to this decomposition. Uh, P on one side, the Q on the other side. And then you find that the left upper corner is invertible in this matrix. This is what, what, what it is. Okay, so, thank you. Yes, okay, uh, thank you for the question. So, uh, but uh, here the, the order is important because uh, uh, we see that uh, invertible up to PQ means this, but if for A star, we change, we change the order. And uh, now there is, a, 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 since we speak about two by two matrices, uh, then we also want to be able to triangulize uh, such uh, matrices with respect to these decompositions and preserve the compositions up to isomorphism. And this is what they also obtain. So, uh, if um, uh, you take uh, some decomposition, you uh, assume that uh, uh, A, uh, A, yes, you assume that A is invertible up to pair PQ, uh, then uh, there is a projection uh, Q prime in A, such that Q prime is equivalent to Q, Murray von Neumann equivalent, I mean, and such that A is invertible up to this new pair, where uh, Q prime uh, satisfies these relations. So Q prime A one minus P is equal to zero. 
And this means that uh, actually uh, your element A uh, has a upper triangular form with respect to this decomposition. And in addition, Q prime is equivalent to Q. So this is very useful for several results later. I, I shall explain how we apply this. And uh, you have a symmetric version, which you can obtain by passing to the other joints and using this lemma, uh, because uh, if uh, there is also another projection P prime in A, such that P prime is equivalent to P, and such that A is invertible up to P prime Q, where this relation holds, which means that A has a lower triangular form uh, with respect to this new uh, decomposition. Uh, so I you apply this property several times in my proof, but there is also another lemma by Hershkovich and Lazovic, which I applied once. I will I explain later how I apply this in the concrete case of Neumann algebras. Uh, so what they do, they take a fixed approximate unit in this ideal F consisting of projections. And then they say that if you choose an arbitrary projection P in F, uh, then you can find the sum alpha naught and some projection P prime, uh, such that P prime is less or equal to P alpha naught, and such that P is equivalent uh, to P prime. And not only that, actually, uh, you can uh, choose alpha naught uh, such that you can make this arbitrary small. So what, uh, whatever small you wish <coughs> is different to be, you can find an alpha naught satisfying this and also satisfying that this difference in the norm is uh, small enough. So this is very strong property and uh, we can deduce some uh, very uh, fine uh, other properties from this property. And finally, I shall define the Fredcon type elements. But before that, uh, we, should be, uh, we should ensure that the index will be well-defined in this K group and it does not depend on the decomposition. Uh, so if A is invertible up to PQ and also invertible up to P prime Q prime, where all these are projections in F, then Kershky uh, Shavazovich uh, proved that actually this difference will be the same in this uh, uh, K group. And hence, they are able to define a Fredcon type elements. Uh, simply, they say that A in A is a Fredcon type if there are projections. Uh, here, the problem in definition is that they do not, do not specify a Fredcon type with respect to this ideal, because you can also have another ideal, then the things uh, change. But with respect to this ideal, A in A is of Fredcon type if there are projections PQ in F such that A is invertible up to PQ. And then they define index of A in this way here, in this K group, and the index is well defined thanks to this uh, proposition here. And one more result by Kershkovich and Lazovic before I move to my uh, own uh, result. Actually, there are a few more results. Well, they proved that the set of Fredcon time elements is open in A, and this follows simply as I announced. Uh, 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 let me go back here. As I announced, thanks to this lemma here, that uh, if you see is small enough, then we have the A plus C is invertible up to the same pair of projections. So it follows then straightforward. Uh, another thing which they proved is that the set of Fredcon type elements is invariant under perturbation by uh, finite type elements, and also that the index is invariant under this perturbation. But uh, I should say that if you read their paper, then you will very quickly recognize that the proof has uh, problems and the proof is not uh, correct uh, as it is in the paper. But this can be fixed. Uh, and uh, in my paper, I, uh, I needed to fix this uh, for uh, semi vile type elements to show that they are also invariant under finite type perturbations for finite type elements. So this can be fixed and uh, uh, fortunately this uh, really holds. So we have that this set is invariant under perturbation by finite type elements and likewise the index. And in the particular case, if A is just the unit, then uh, index of one plus F is zero because index of one is zero and et cetera. And uh, also they obtained the generalization of the Atkinson uh, theorem uh, so A is of Redcon type uh, with respect to the ideal F, if A is invertible modulo F, and conversely, if A is invertible modulo F, then A is of Redcon type, again, with respect to this uh, fixed ideal F. And finally, as I announced in the beginning, they approved multiplicativity of the index. So if T1 and T2 are uh, two Redcon type elements with respect to the same ideal F, 
then you have the multiplicativity of the index. And this was my uh, introduction. So now we can move to the new results uh, from this uh, recent research, which I did as a continuation of uh, Kerskic Lazovic research. Are there some questions uh, so far or? Uh... You may proceed. Thank you very much. So first I needed to establish a technical lemma and this lemma, uh, it, turns, uh, it seems to be trivial, but actually it requires, it really requires some technical work, but is very useful. So uh, if A is in A, and we have four projections, P, Q, P prime, and Q prime. And suppose now that P, Q, and P prime are finite. So Q prime is not uh, necessarily finite, but the first three are finite. Uh, if A uh, is invertible up to P, Q, and also invertible up to P prime and Q prime, then it turns out that Q prime has to be finite. So due to finite test of the first two and of the first one here, and to the fact that A is invertible to up to both these pairs, it uh, uh, pushes that uh, Q prime has to be a finite element. Uh, and uh, likewise, if you change, if you assume that P, Q and Q prime are finite, but not necessarily P prime, and A is invertible up to both these pairs, then it will uh, uh, turn out that P prime also is uh, finite. It seems to be just a technical lemma, but it really has applications for other, other proofs and it required uh, uh, some uh, work. Uh, the proof of this lemma, we have a corollary, which is not a corollary of lemma itself, but of the proof of this lemma, and which is also useful for other purposes. So, uh, if A is invertible uh, both up to pair P, Q and up to pair P, Q prime, uh, then uh, as you can guess, uh, Q has to be equivalent uh, to Q prime because P is the same on both uh, sides. But it is neither quite straightforward, but it follows from the proof of this lemma. And similarly, if A is invertible both up to pair P, Q and P prime Q, then you must have that P is equivalent uh, to uh, P prime. And actually it is also obtained thanks to these tri triangulizations, which I announced uh, in the beginning. Another corollary, which is even more technical, so I will not read the whole one, but uh, this has application when we later uh, consider uh, two by two uh, matrices uh, with coefficients in von Neumann algebras. So I shall uh, just explain what the corollary is about. So, and uh, now A is invertible up to pairs P, Q and P prime and Q prime. Of course, all of them are projections just to clarify this. But now we only assume that P and P prime are in F. So we say nothing about Q and Q prime. Uh, in the first lemma, we had also that uh, one of these Qs were finite. <coughs> but it turns out that still we can say something about Q and Q prime, uh, roughly speaking, they will differ by a finite type element up to isomorphism. Or more precisely, uh, there will be some projections the Q tilde equivalent to Q and Q tilde prime equivalent to Q prime, such that this sum is equivalent to this sum where this uh, Q uh, uh, double tilde, Q prime double tilde are some finite projections. So up to isomorphism, they will uh, differ by a finite uh, type uh, projection. And this is the property which we need later. I shall later explain how we apply this. Uh, one more uh, technical result before I really speak about uh, concrete results. This lemma we need uh, to be able to speak about the compressions uh, of element A with respect to the projections in a finite, uh, in the ideal of finite type element. Uh, so, it turns out that A is a Fredholm type element. Now, I mean, with respect to this fixed ideal F, if and only if for every projection P tilde in this ideal F, so arbitrary projection P tilde, there should exist projections of P prime and Q prime in F such that P tilde is res less or equal to P prime, P tilde is less or equal to Q prime, and A is invertible up to pair P prime and Q prime. So now we should notice that uh, there is one implication which needs to be uh, proved. Uh, because uh, if this holds, if A is invertible up to this pair, then by definition A is Fredholm type element.
because P prime and Q prime are in F. So the, the uh, converse implication uh, is important. And it says that if this is straight from type element, then whatever projection P tilde you choose in F, you can find such P prime and Q prime in F satisfying all these uh, properties. And then we have a corollary of this lemma, which is again, not a corollary from lemma itself, but from the proof of lemma. But once again, a corollary which have, has uh, several applications. Uh, so uh, if A and B are in A. Stefan, excuse me. Yes. Uh, uh, at the beginning, you told us that F is an subalgebra in A, but now you several times meant, uh, called it an ideal. So yes. is it an ideal or a subalgebra? Uh, it is actually an ideal. So it is by definition, let us go back to the first definition. Uh, it is a bit confusing uh, as they wrote, uh, maybe Kashkic and Lazovic, because they say F is a subalgebra, which satisfy that F is a self-adjoint ideal. Okay. So I would start saying by F is a self-adjoint ideal, satisfying the second and the third property. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, uh, F uh, has to be a self-adjoint ideal by definition. Mm -hmm. So yes. Uh, and always we shall mean that it is a, a self-adjoint idea. Uh, let us uh, go back. Uh, I was uh, here, I think, yes. Uh, so uh, if A, B are in A, and we suppose that B, A is invertible up to pair of projections, uh, P and Q, uh, now these projections are in A, so not necessarily in F, but arbitrary projections in A. Uh, so then, there exists a projection R in A, so not in F, but in A, such that A and B are invertible up to pairs PR and RQ respectively. So A is invertible up to PR and B is invertible up to RQ. And in addition, uh, uh, A has upper triangular form with respect to this decomposition, or in other words, one, one minus R A one minus P is A one minus P. So it says something which we also have for operators, if you have a composition of operators and it has a certain decomposition with this uh, almost invertibility as we speak about, then we also have some uh, decomposition in between so that for each of the operators in the composition, we can say we can obtain another decomposition. And this is also useful uh, property. And uh, now I shall explain how this lemma uh, has application. Uh, so, if uh, P is now a finite type projection, then this is a corner uh, sister algebra. And it is not hard to show that this is a, a self-adjoined uh, ideal in this corner sister algebra since F is a self-adjoined ideal in A. Uh, but not only that, but actually this couple uh, would satisfy the conditions of the very first definition which I introduced in the beginning uh, regarding that we have an approximate unit of projections and uh, the other uh, one uh, property. Uh, but this means that when, uh, since this couple satisfies this condition, then actually it makes sense to speak about Fredholm type elements in this uh, corner sister algebra uh, with respect to this ideal uh, here. Uh, so then we can speak about the compressions. And uh, if A is in A and P is a, a finite projection in F, uh, then A is a Fredholm type element in A with respect to the ideal F, if and only if this compression is a Fredholm type element in this corner a sister algebra with respect to this ideal, this ideal here. Uh, so this is something which we know regarding uh, the compressions of operators that operator is a Fredholm if and only if uh, the compression uh, is a Fredholm when you take the compression over uh, uh, projections with the finite dimensional uh, kernel. And uh, here we obtain a generalization in this uh, setting here, but uh, this corollary is obtained thanks to this uh, technical lemma uh, here. And uh, finally, I am uh, able uh, to define the semi fretical elements. Uh, by the way, are there some questions before I uh, read the definition? If not, then I shall continue with the <coughs> definition. Uh, so, uh, we say that A is uh, an upper semi Fredholm element, again, with respect to this ideal, if A is invertible up to pair of projections P and Q, 
where P is a, a finite a projection. So now we do no longer assume that both of the projections are finite, but only the first one. And similarly, we say that A is a lower semi flatcomb element with respect to this ideal. But in this case, we assume that Q is a finite uh, projection and not uh, uh, necessarily <coughs> B. So how it differs from flatcomb elements is that we have only one sided a finite uh, projection in this pair. And uh, now we have some description. Uh, so uh, if A is an upper semi flatcomb element, and pi tilde is a projection in A such that A pi tilde is zero, then pi tilde has to be a finite uh, projection. And then if you take a particular case where PQR projections in A such that A is invertible up to this pair, and such that also one minus QA, one minus P is equal to A, so then we have this equality. In this case, A is an upper semi platform element if and only if uh, the first projection P is finite. And now it may seem a bit abstract, but later we shall see application. Actually, it means that uh, we can describe the kernel if it, we speak about uh, concrete operators. Then uh, 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 this pi tilde will imitate the projection onto the kernel. And this special case, which I read he, uh, was reading here, this is the case when the operator has closed image. Then this holds then P is the projection onto the kernel and Q is the projection onto the orthogonal complement of the image. Uh, so really uh, we wish uh, to, uh, in the same way as for operators, we describe semi flatcomb elements in terms of kernels and the orthogonal complement of the images. Uh, in this generalized setting here, we have a such a description. And uh, when I read this first property, there is a second symmetric uh, property which can be obtained by passing through the adjoints. And this similar says that A is a lower semi flatcomb element. And if, if A is a lower semi flatcomb element, and Q tilde is a projection in A such that Q tilde A is zero, then Q tilde has to be a finite. <clears throat> and in particular, if PQR projections in A such that A is invertible up to PQ and such that this holds, then A is a lower semi flatcomb element if and only if Q is in F. So as I announced here is we speak about the projections onto the kernel, but here we speak about the projections onto the orthogonal complement of the image in the concrete case of operators. And uh, also another description is that uh, A is an upper semi flatcomb element if and only if A is a left invertible up to some projection, uh, finite projection P. And similarly, A is a lower semi flatcomb element if and only if A is right invertible up to some finite projection Q in F. And uh, the implication in one direction in this lemma is obtained thanks to this uh, technical corollary, which I was reading uh, here. So when I read these technical results, they have some purpose for the next results which come. And also um, one could ask what about uh, Fredholm alternative? So, uh, what I managed to obtain so far is uh, just in the special case when this uh, K group satisfies the cancellation uh, property. Uh, and in that case, we can say that uh, if A is an invertible element, now A should be invertible uh, in the system algebra. If A is invertible, then for every finite time element F, we have that A plus F is left invertible, if and only if A plus F is right uh, invertible which means that A plus F is invertible. So it means that A plus F is either invertible or not, neither left or right uh, invertible. Uh, but uh, let us move now to, to define semi vial type elements, which is a more important part of the talk. Before defining a semi vial type elements, we also uh, need to introduce this relation regarding the projections uh, in a C star algebra. Uh, so we will denote P in this way, I would say related to cure, whatever you wish to say, if there exists some projection P prime, of course in A, uh, such that uh, P prime is less or equal to Q and such that P is equivalent uh, to P prime. Uh, why do we need this? Well, we want uh, to generalize the sign of the index because uh, in classical semi vial theory of operators on Hilbert spaces, then you speak about the negative and positive index. So here we cannot speak about this, the index is in the K group, but uh, in order to, to obtain generalization of this notion, then we need to introduce this. Uh, 
And uh, finally, we can define the semi vial type elements. So we say that A is an upper semi vial type element with respect to this ideal F, if there exist projections uh, P, Q in A, uh, such that uh, P is uh, finite, such that P is related uh, to Q, and such that A is invertible up to pair uh, P, Q. And uh, similarly, we say that A is a lower semi vial type element with respect to the ideal F, but in this case, we assume that Q is finite, so not P, but Q, and that Q is related to P and not P related to Q. Uh, and as you can see, uh, uh, if A is a uh, upper uh, semi wild type element, then A is automatically, by definition, upper semi freight home element because P is uh, finite. So the additional property is this. So upper semi wild type elements is a subclass of uh, upper semi freight uh, type elements. And likewise for a lower semi frame and lower semi vial type elements, because we have this additional property uh, here. And finally, we say that A is a vial type element with respect to the ideal F. Uh, if A is invertible up to pair PQ, where PQ are projections in F. So now both projections are finite. And in addition, we require that P is equivalent to Q, uh, which would automatically imply the first property implies that A is a Fredholm type element, and the second property implies that the index is zero. Uh, and this is what we know for operators, while operators on Hilbert uh, space. Um, also for operators on Morpheus. So now I want to introduce the notation of these uh, various uh, subclasses which we uh, defined above. Uh, so KF plus is the set of all upper semi fretcon type elements. KF minus is the set of all lower semi fretcon type elements. KF is the set of fretcon type elements. Uh, KF plus minus is the set of upper semi vial type elements. KF minus plus is the set of lower semi vial type elements. And KF zero is the set of vial type elements. And uh, now there is a remark before I move to other uh, results. Actually, uh, in the same way as uh, Kesh Lazovic obtained the generalization of the Atkinson theorem for Fredholm type elements, one can also show that A is a upper semi Fredholm type element if and only if A is left invertible modulo this ideal F. And uh, similarly, A is a lower a semi Fredholm type element if and only if A is right invertible modulo this ideal F. And then uh, uh, here, uh, this lemma five, uh, I don't have the number, but this is this lemma where, where I was speaking about the adjoint. <clears throat> uh, when you move to, uh, let me go back, uh, it is here. Uh, it is here. So uh, uh, recall this lemma regarding the adjoint that A star will be invertible up to the opposite pair. So we simply change the, the order. Uh, thanks to this lemma, one can show in this remark uh, here that uh, A is upper semi Fredholm if and only if A star is lower semi Fredholm, simply because projections change uh, the order. And also, A is, <coughs> upper semi A is upper semi vial if and only if A star is a lower semi vial, again, because only the projections change uh, the order. And also recall, I will not once go back again, uh, recall this lemma for the openness of the set when we speak that if we fixed a pair of projection and A is invertible up to this uh, pair, then if C is sufficiently small in the norm, then A plus C is invertible up to the same pair. Let me skip or go back again to, to read this lemma. But this lemma is important, lemma by Kershkis Lazovic is important uh, uh, in order to show that all these classes of operators which we defined now are open in the norm topology of A. Now, this was just a remark, but there is a proposition which is not uh, quite straightforward to show. It requires really a technical work, but uh, it says something about this uh, set differences. So the first set difference is the set of all upper semi Fredholm type elements that are not uh, upper semi vial type elements. The second one is the set of all lower semi Fredholm elements that are not lower semi vial type elements. And the last one is the set of Fredholm type elements that are not uh, Fredholm type elements that are not wild type elements. 
recall that uh, all these are subclasses of this. And uh, all these uh, set uh, differences will be open, they are open in the norm uh, topology. Uh, and as I said, this cannot be deduced from this lemma here, but uh, really we need uh, additional work. But once you have this, so you have the openness of all these sets, and in addition, you have openness of these set differences, then you can deduce uh, this corollary. And uh, this corollary is about uh, continuous maps from the unit interval into this uh, C star algebra, but the maps uh, which uh, satisfy that their image is contained in the set of semi fredcom type elements in A. So let's just take one example uh, uh, here. For example, if uh, F of zero is uh, upper semi uh, fredcom element, but not upper semi vial type element, then F of one is also upper semi fredcom element, but not upper semi vial type element. And there we apply that this set is open and that these sets uh, are open. Uh, and likewise, let me skip read all these properties, but as you can guess, we can explain all these properties how? Well, because we have a continuous map, so its image uh, has to be uh, connected because uh, this uh, unit interval is connected. And thanks to the openness, both of all these sets and their set differences, they ensure that uh, the start point uh, 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 image of the start point should belong to the same uh, uh, class as the, the image of the end point, because otherwise you would get a separation of uh, the image, and this is not possible. Uh, so also we uh, let me just read the last property. So if f of zero is uh, Fredcom, then f of one is Fredcom, and the index is also uh, preserved. And actually. Uh, it is not just to speak about the endpoints, but actually to speak about the whole image. The whole image has to be uh, preserved because image is connected. So it has to be <clears> preserved <throat> in one of these uh, subclasses. Uh, another uh, property is topological property. So uh, again, thanks to the openness of the sets and the set differences. So uh, if A belongs to the boundary of the set of Fredcom type elements in A, then A cannot be a semi fredcom type element. And similarly, if A belongs to the boundary of uh, upper semi vial type elements, then A cannot be a uh, upper semi fredcom element. Also, if A belongs to the boundary of lower semi vial type elements, then A cannot be a lower semi fredcom uh -huh. element. And finally, if A belongs to the boundary of vial type elements, then A cannot be a fredcom uh, type element. And now, as I announced, uh, Kershkis and Lazovich had a problem in the proof by proving uh, invariance under finite type uh, perturbations. But uh, fortunately, it can be fixed. And when it is fixed, then it also works for these classes uh, here. So uh, all these classes of uh, upper, uh, lower, uh, semi vial type elements and vial type elements are uh, fortunately invariant under finite uh, type uh, perturbations. And uh, now we have a characterization of semi vial type elements. So, A is upper semi vial type element, if and only if there exists a left invertible element B in A and some finite uh, type element F in F such that A is equal B plus F. Also, A is uh, a lower uh, semi vial type element if and only if there exists a right invertible element B in A and some finite type element F in F such that A is equal to B plus F. And finally, A is vial type element if and only if there exists an invertible element B in A and some finite type element F such that A is equal to uh, B uh, plus F. Later, it has a direct uh, geometric description when we speak about concrete operators in von Neumann algebras I shall read it later, but uh, so far we have this proposition. And uh, also it has a corollary because thanks to this proposition, uh, the, all these sets of upper, lower, semi-vial type elements and vital elements, all these sets are uh, semi-groups under the multiplication. And this follows straightforward from this uh, proposition. And now one can ask, uh, how does the intersection of the set of upper semi-vial type elements and lower semi-vial type elements look like. 
because in the case of operators on Hilbert spaces, this is just the set of while operators. And then we, uh, of course, ask, is, is, oh, is it also true for this generalized uh, situation? And uh, the yes, the answer is yes, <clears throat> in case of uh, von Neumann algebras, as we, as we shall see later. But uh, so far, let me just present this proposition. So if A is in the intersection of upper semi type elements, lower semi type elements, and great form elements, then there exist projections P, Q, finite projections, such that A is invertible up to this pair, such that A has upper triangular form with respect to this decomposition. And in addition, we have that both P is related to Q and Q is related to P. Uh, so I'm not sure whether we can, uh, having these two properties really deduce that P is equivalent to Q in this general, general case. But in the case of von Neumann algebras, there we will speak about finite uh, projections and there really it would be possible. Uh, so this is the last uh, technical lemma in this generalized setting. And before moving to the concrete case of von Neumann algebras, uh, let me just read uh, one more proposition uh, regarding general C star algebras. Also, uh, I would like to say uh, how this proposition is motivated. Uh, later in my references, I, sh I shall show a paper by uh, Professor uh, Dragan Georgievich. Uh, in that paper, uh, he can define the so-called generalized vial operators on uh, Hilbert uh, spaces. And what are these operators? Those are operators with closed image uh, whose kernel is isomorphic to the orthogonal complement of the image. So they generalize ordinary while operators because uh, you know, for ordinary while operators, you have in addition that kernel and the orthogonal complement of the image are finite dimensional and thus have some same dimension, hence isomorphic. But here they can be also infinite dimensional. So we only require that the kernel is isomorphic to the orthogonal complement of the image and the, the operator is closed range. And then he proved that if you take two such generalized while operators, you take their composition and you assume that the composition has closed image, then the composition, composition is also generalized while operator. And then motivated by that, I wanted to present this proposition in this generalized C star algebra. And uh, really, I can promise that this proposition really uh, uses a quite different proof, but uh, some uh, of the results in the proof uh, are obtained by uh, Keshkic Lazovic, which I read above, so which I apply then in the proof. But let me read this proposition. So now you know what is the motivation. So this may hopefully not see so abstract. I will explain how this generalizes this uh, concrete case. So if A, B are in A, and we suppose that there exist uh, projections P, uh, Q, P prime, Q prime, and P tilde, Q tilde in A, such that one minus Q, A, one minus P is A, 1 minus Q prime B, 1 minus P prime is B, and 1 minus Q tilde B A, 1 minus P tilde is B A, and in addition, A is invertible up to P Q, B is invertible up to P prime Q prime, and B A is invertible up to P tilde a Q tilde. Uh, here you recognize that we speak about the operators uh, in the concrete case of operators on Hilbert spaces. This just means that we speak about the operators with closed image. So in that case, you will have these expressions and these projections will be just the projections, respective projections onto the kernel and the orthogonal uh, complement. And so if you have all this, then it turns out that if P is more a phenomenon equivalent to Q, and if P prime is a more a phenomenon equivalent to Q prime, then P tilde will be equivalent uh, to Q tilde. This is what we have here. And recall what I said regarding uh, Professor Georgievich's result. He said that if two uh, generalized while operators, their composition has closed image, then also it is generalized while. That means that uh, the kernel of this composition is isomorphic to the orthogonal complement of the image of this composition. And this is exactly this statement here. So P tilde is the projection onto the kernel and Q tilde is the projection onto the orthogonal complement of the image of B A. Uh, which is uh, the composition. 
So we have this. And in addition, uh, we, we can also show that uh, uh, P, so this P which comes from the comp the composition of A is less or equal to P tilde. Q prime, which comes from the decomposition of B is less or equal than this Q tilde. And also uh, P tilde minus P is related to P prime and uh, Q tilde minus Q prime. So this difference is related to Q uh, here. Also, this may seem abstract in just uh, uh, the language of the general, general system algebras, but this uh, generalized the second part of the classical index uh, theorem. Uh, and I shall just explain already here in the corollary how it looks like. Uh, so now we move to von Neumann algebras. And uh, uh, this is a von Neumann algebra acting on a Hilbert space H. And TS are now operators in this von Neumann algebra, where, as I said, all of these are closed range operators. And then uh, it turns out that uh, there exists some closed subspaces H1 and H2 of H, such that kernel of ST can be written as this direct sum where the projection onto H1 is related uh, to projection onto the kernel of S. So you have kernel of T on one side and the second term is related to the projection on the kernel of S. And uh, this uh, simply generalizes uh, the first part of the index theorem, which says the dimension of the kernel of ST is less or equal than the dimension of kernel T plus the dimension of kernel of S, what we have for operators on uh, classical Fredholm theory. And also for the orthogonal complement of the image, it can be written as this decomposition where H2 is such that the projection onto H2 is related to the projection onto the image, uh, the orthogonal complement of the image of T. Uh, and how does this follow? Well, this follows from the, the last, very last relation which I read in this proposition here. And the first relation uh, say that uh, if uh, a, a projection onto the kernel of T is equivalent to the projection onto the orthogonal complement of the image of T, and also if this holds, then this, this has, to, has to hold as a Yanost. So uh, uh, all these uh, results which I read so far, they may seem a bit uh, artificial and abstract in uh, the language of general system algebras, but as soon as we move to von Neumann algebras, they get some more concrete uh, uh, expression. And uh, now uh, I can move to uh, Brewer's theory, uh, Fredholm theory on von Neumann algebras and its extensions, uh, which are the application of the presented results. But before that, are there maybe some uh, questions? Sorry, at the previous page, uh, you said that there exists some closed subspaces H sub one and H sub two, uh, and you wrote uh, projections onto these subspaces. P yes. sub H1 and P sub H2. Yes. Do these projections lie in the von Neumann algebra? Thank you very for uh, very much for the question. Yes, this is indeed the case. I should mention before mentioning these relations that they lie in the uh, in von Neumann uh, algebras. And uh, actually, one can prove it in two ways. The first one follows from this here because here here we deal with uh, the projections which belong to our C star algebra A, which now are just a concrete von Neumann algebra. And these projections are indeed the projections onto the kernel and the orthogonal complement of the image, thanks to these properties here. This is one way one can argue, but the other way one can argue is that the, pro, uh, the more direct way to argue is that these uh, projections are difference between the projection onto the kernel of ST and the projection onto the kernel of T because we have this decomposition. So hence they lie uh, in uh, our von Neumann uh, algebra. Mm -hmm. Is this okay or? Uh... Yes, yes, thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Then I will move uh, uh, to Brewer's theory. Now we shall not just speak about arbitrary von Neumann algebras, but we will need to restrict to properly infinite uh, uh, von Neumann algebras. Uh, so I should first repeat the definition from uh, Brewer, which was already repeated in uh, uh, Kerchkic-Lazovic uh, paper, 
So that is that is how I know this definition. I wasn't able to get Brewer's paper, but uh, I re was reading the citation from Kerskich Lazovic paper, and this is the definition. I should read it now. So, if A is a von Neumann algebra, and this is the set of projections belonging to this A, but pro is zero A is the set of all uh, finite uh, projections in A. Uh, well, those projections that are not uh, more von Neumann equivalent to any its uh, proper uh, sub uh, projection. Then, according to Breuer, an operator T in this uh, A uh, von Neumann algebra is said to be A Fredholm if the following holds. First of all, the projection onto the kernel uh, has to be a finite. And the second condition is that there exists some projection E finite uh, projection in this von Neumann algebra, such that the image of E minus I minus E is contained in the image of T. And uh, from uh, one can show that this will give that uh, the projection onto the kernel of T star, or actually the projection onto the orthogonal complement of the image of T also belongs, uh, also is finite projection in this von Neumann algebra. And then uh, he was also defining uh, the index, uh, but uh, these are not classical dimensions, but they are dimensions in this index group of uh, von Neumann algebra. Uh, let me keep going into detail how this is constructed because we shall not apply very much in the next results uh, the index, but uh, this is how they, he defines uh, uh, these uh, uh, A Fredholm operators. But uh, now we shall uh, see uh, that according to Kershkic and Lazovic, they can be described also in another way, equivalent way, uh, which uh, is close to the, what we presented uh, so far. So uh, Kershkic and Lazovic proved in, uh, they call it corollary, that if A is a properly infinite von Neumann algebra acting on a Hilbert space stage, and if now this M is the norm, norm closure of the set of all S uh, in A, uh, which are finite operators. Uh, uh, what means finite to be finite operator? This means that the projection onto the closure of the image is a finite projection. So you take the set of all finite operators and you take the norm closure and you obtain, it is already proved that it is a, a closed set for joint ideal in this uh, uh, von Neumann algebra. And if you consider this concrete ideal, uh, then it will turn out, uh, according to Gershkic and Lazovic, that this couple would satisfy the conditions of our very first definition, which means that one can speak about Fredholm type elements in this von Neumann algebra with respect to this idea. But not only that, uh, they also show that uh, Fredholm type elements in A with respect to this ideal are exactly Brewer's Fredholm operators uh, which we defined above here. And uh, in the proof of this uh, corollary, uh, they show that uh, the set of uh, finite uh, projections in A is actually an approximate unit in the norm, approximate unit for this uh, ideal uh, here. And then uh, thanks to this, I uh, give a remark that actually every projection uh, which belongs uh, to this uh, set, uh, this ideal M, uh, has to be actually finite uh, projection. Um, maybe there are di direct ways without uh, applying uh, Kershki Shlazovich proofs to see this, probably it is obvious, but also from this proof one can see this because uh, the problem is that this is the norm closure. So this is not only the set of finite operators, but the norm closure. But uh, since this is approximate uh, unit, there is a lemma. Let me now go back. Now I just want to illustrate why I was reading this lemma in the very beginning, uh, because um, uh, they say uh, in this lemma that uh, if you fix an approximate unit in this ideal and you have an arbitrary projection in the ideal, then actually you have this relation for some alpha naught. And now if you look in our concrete case, uh, our ideal, is the ideal of uh, M, the ideal M, the norm closure of finite, the set of finite operators. And our fixed approximate unit is what? The set of all finite projections in A. 
So if you take an arbitrary projection in the ideal M, then you would have this relation thanks to this lemma. But since this is a finite projection, it would follow, it is not hard to show that this also is a finite projection. So this was the reason for reading the R lemma because then we obtain this uh, useful property. Uh, I apologize for browsing up and down, but uh, uh, really I want to illustrate this. So this, when we have this property, uh, then uh, we as a corollary, we can describe Brewer's a fred home operators uh, in a direct, a more direct way uh, in terms of these finite projections. And this is a corollary of uh, Kerchke Shlazovich result and of this remark of both these things. So if A is a proper infinite for Neumann algebra, then an operator T in A is uh, A, a fred home in the sense of Brewer if and only if there exists a finite uh, projections P and Q in A such that T is invertible uh, up to uh, uh, PQ. Uh, and uh, so now we have something which uh, really, so that we can really apply our general results uh, which we read before for gen general system algebra. Uh, also, now we are able to define a semi A Fredholm operators. So if A is a properly infinite for Neumann algebra, then T is upper semi A Fredholm. This is now my definition. T is upper semi A Fredholm. If there exists projections P and Q in A, such that T is invertible up to PQ, where P is finite projection. So not necessarily Q, but P. If in addition, we require that P is related to Q, more if Neumann related, then T will be called upper semi A while operator. And similarly for low semi A Fredholm and low semi A while only here you change the role. So Q will play the role of P. Um, Q will be a final projection and Q will be related to P. And then as a corollary, which is uh, now again a corollary of this uh, remark and this result, a corollary says that if A is a proper and infinite for Neumann algebra and T is in A, then T is upper, respectively lower, semi Fredholm type element in A with respect to this ideal M, if and only if T is upper, respectively lower semi A Fredholm in the sense of the definition which I was reading uh, here. And uh, similarly, uh, uh, regarding semi vial uh, type element. So T is upper, respectively lower semi vial type element in A with respect to this ideal M, if and only if T is upper, respectively lower semi A vial in the sense of this definition which I was reading. And likewise, for via type elements with respect to M and A while operators in the sense of the above definition. And as I uh, said, this follows thanks to this relation here. And uh, now we have some corollaries from these uh, abstract results which were, uh, we were reading before. So A is a properly infinite for Neumann algebra acting on a Hebrew space H and T is in A. Then T is upper semi A Fredholm if and only if there exists some finite projection P such that T is bounded below on I minus P of H. And similarly, T is lower semi A Fredholm if and only if there exists some finite projection Q such that I minus Q of H is uh, in the image uh, of T. And as you recall, we were speaking about that A is upper or low, lower semi Fredholm type element if and only if it's left invertible or right invertible modulo some finite projection. So thanks to this, we get this uh, corollary. Uh, now we have another corollary. Uh, you recall this uh, lemma where I was already said that the lemma is uh, meaning, the meaning of the lemma is to characterize semi fredcom operators in terms of kernels and the orthogonal complement of the image. And as I promised here, we have this. So if T is upper semi A fredcom then the projection onto the kernel is finite projection. In particular, if image of T is closed, then T is upper semi A Fredholm if and only if the projection onto the kernel is finite projection. And similarly for low semi A Fredholm, then we speak about the projection onto the orthogonal complement of the image, but analog uh, holds. And uh, now we have a characterization of semi A while operators. Really, a T is upper semi A while if and only if there exists uh, some bounded below operator S and finite operator F 
such that T is equal S plus F, T is lower semi A value if and only if there exists some surjective operator S and finite operator uh, F, such that T is S plus F, and finally T is A while if and only if there exists some invertible operator S and finite operator F, such that T is S plus F. You recognize the previous general uh, proposition regarding left and right invertible elements, uh, how they characterize uh, semi vial type elements. So this is a corollary. And as I announced, also now we can finally say that the intersection of uh, lower semi, upper semi A vial operators and lower semi I vial operators is actually the set of A vial operators in this uh, concrete uh, case. Because if P is related to Q and Q is related to P, here we speak about finite projections in von Neumann algebra, then it is not hard to show that uh, this will give that P is, is equivalent to Q. So hence, uh, this intersection is just the set of A vial operators. Uh, let me just also mention one technical lemma in order to introduce a punctured neighborhood theorem for uh, this uh, von Neumann, uh, the Feynman operators in von Neumann algebra. So uh, now again, A is properly infinite. Uh, so if T is A Fredholm, an image of T is closed, then there exists uh, uh, an epsilon greater than zero, such that for every S in A, which is in the norm or less than epsilon, uh, then uh, the projection onto the kernel of T plus S is related to the projection of kernel of T and the projection of the orthogonal complement of the image of T plus S is related to the projection onto the orthogonal complement of the image of T. This is just a technical lemma, but uh, really necessary in order to give now the generalization of so-called punctured neighborhood uh, theory. So in this case, we assume that T is a Fredholm operator, uh, but we also assume that the image of Tn is closed for all n and that this equality uh, holds. I mean, the inclusion always holds, but uh, really we need equality in order to, to obtain what we want. So this is the condition, additional condition which we put. And this condition will be satisfied for uh, classical Fredholm operators for Hilbert spaces. So uh, our result will be hence a proper generalization. So we have this additional condition. And what do we have now? So then there exists an epsilon greater than zero such that if lambda is in C satisfying these uh, inequalities, then the dimension of kernel of T is equal to dimension of kernel of T minus lambda I plus dimension of N1 and the dimension of the orthogonal complement of the image of T is equal to dimension of the orthogonal complement of the image of T minus lambda I plus the dimension of N1. As I said, now it's not ordinary dimension, but it is index group. For some fixed closed subspace N1, satisfying that the projection onto N1 is a finite uh, projection in A. And this is what we recognize as a punctured neighborhood theorem in the classical Fredholm theory. Uh, because here, this N1 is a fixed, but the lambda may vary as long lambda stays in these uh, punctured neighborhoods, because we do not include zero. Uh, and uh, I'm not really sure, I really wonder whether Brewer himself gave this uh, proposition, because I don't have access to his paper, but when I googled uh, punctured neighborhood theorem in von Neumann algebra, I couldn't get anything. So since this proposition applies this lemma and this lemma applies some general lemmas which I was reading uh, in past, I suppose that uh, he maybe does not have this. But in any case, I am reading this, this, this holds, whether he has or he does not have it in his paper. And now I should read just the last result as I said, uh, you recall that I said that one technical corollary, which I was reading before, has application for two by two matrices in von Neumann algebras. And now you should see this application. So, of course, if A is properly infinite for Neumann algebra, then M2 of A, this is also for Neumann algebra. It is not uh, hard uh, to show this, that it is closed in the strong operator topology, but it is, of course, also properly infinite. And then we can uh, consider this for Neumann algebra. And for what we wish to consider, we wish to consider upper triangular 
two by two matrices whose coefficients belong to A. And uh, actually we should fix T and S and C would vary. So therefore we should denote this matrix only by MC and not by MC, T, S because T, S are, are fixed. And then uh, we can also define a Fredholm spectrum as usual. The Fredholm spectrum is the set of all lambda C subject at M of C minus lambda I here I is the identity in this greater uh, von Neumann algebra, such that Fc minus lambda I is not A factor. So the set of uh, A Fredholm operators induce uh, a spectrum, Fredholm spectrum. And also in this smaller uh, von Neumann algebra A, you can similarly define Fredholm spectra of T and S. And then I should say that uh, this inclusion always uh, holds, and it is uh, more or less uh, straightforward to show the inclusion. But we wish we ask now what happens if the inclusion is proper. And here we have the proposition. So uh, if there exists some C in A such that this inclusion, so uh, this spectrum is included in the union of these two spectra, if this inclusion is proper, then uh, we have uh, this uh, relation here. So the union of Fredholm spectra of T and S is the Fredholm spectra of the matrix union the intersection of Fredholm spectra of T and S. And uh, this uh, generalized uh, uh, no, the result by uh, Professor Georgievic. Let me just mention uh, this uh, reference, uh, his uh, paper in general of operator theory. And here is his uh, paper of generalized vial operators, which I was speaking about before. But uh, here it is this uh, uh, paper. And uh, this uh, is a generalization which we now obtain in the setting of properly infinite uh, von Neumann algebras. So this is what I wanted uh, to say. And uh, first of all, I would like to thank you for the attention. And uh, now if you have some questions, uh, I am here to answer. Okay, thank you. Uh, does anybody have questions? Okay, I have a question uh, about the beginning of your talk about this uh, theory uh, of uh, Fred Holden's relative to uh, an ideal of uh, finite type elements. Yes. Uh, are there known examples of a given sister algebra and two different uh, ideals of finite type elements? So that uh, some operator is Fredholm with respect to one uh, ideal and not Fredholm with respect to another ideal. Uh, so thank you, yes. F1 and F2, both ideals of finite type elements. Yes. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much uh, for uh, this uh, question. And this is a, a very interesting question. Uh, which uh, I intend uh, to have as a topic maybe for the next uh, research. So before uh, speaking about whether there exists such operator, we first need to construct to find the sister algebra uh, and two such ideas such that both uh, satisfy uh, this, uh, this uh, relation. Uh, uh, so uh, uh, yes, uh, uh, I uh, gave this concrete example by for instance, speaking about operators on modules and compact operators, or von Neumann algebra and uh, the idea of finite operators. So one can try maybe to look also in these uh, in these uh, uh, sister uh, sister algebras. But um, uh, what I now have in mind is regarding. But I really need to think. Uh, I would not like to give a wrong answer. But uh, there is another uh, question. Uh, uh, another example regarding your question, because now we had that this is uh, the ideal in uh, this corner uh, sister uh, algebra, but uh, I wonder that uh, it could be maybe, uh, uh, let me think, uh, no, it is not going to be ideal in the, no, no, but really it is, it is, uh, it is an interesting question. So. Uh, one should look first for two such ideals before uh, speaking about uh, fretfulness of, uh, yes, operator. So, and also it is also interesting from the point of view that uh, to find uh, several ideals 
in a given uh, uh, C star algebra. So maybe it will also give a contribution that research would give contribution also in that sense. So, yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Other questions? Okay, if there are no more questions, let me thank the, Stefan once again. Uh, thanks, thanks a lot for an interesting talk. Thank you very much for inviting me. Uh, and uh, yes, thank you very much. Thank you. Mm -hmm. so, so, stop sharing. So.